afternoon. Thank, thank you for joining us for this press conference to recognize the resolution that I'm sponsoring to acknowledge racism as a public health crisis in the city of Columbus. I'm proud to have the support of my council colleagues of this resolution. I'm also pleased to support the resolutions that have been adopted on this issue by the Franklin County Commissioners and the Columbus Board of Health. I would like to acknowledge those who will be joining me for this press conference today. Mayor Andrew Genther, Columbus Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Mashika Roberts, and Columbus Board of Health Board President, Karen Morrison. I also want to thank the many individuals and organizations, both public and private, who have openly demonstrated their support for this resolution by signing a letter. And this letter was, been, was circulated by John Lowe from Jenny's. Uh, I want to acknowledge that my council colleague Emmanuel Rennie is here and so is council member Shayla Favor. As we address the issues brought on by race in this country, it is fitting to think of leaders such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I would like to begin with a quote from Dr. King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. It is my firm belief that we must eradicate racism from all communities. Black, Latino, Asian, Indian, Native American. We must do away with racism in any form to any group of people in order to make progress as a human race. Today, we are focusing on African Americans because of our experience in this country, which has had a profound impact on the quality of life. The toxic stress of the Black community, of the Black experience in America began with slavery, continued through Jim Crow, expanded with segregation. Today, it is manifested in its new forms. African Americans are disproportionately impacted by challenges and inequities, including housing, crime, incarceration, education, employment, health care, and public safety. The emotional, financial, and health toll has generational implications. Life expectancy and mortality rates are often indicators of the health status of the population. A 2017 community health assessment indicated that the homicide rate is the highest among non-Hispanic Black males, which is almost 10 times higher than that of non-Hispanic white males. The report also indicated that non-Hispanic whites have a longer expectancy at birth than non-Hispanic Blacks. 73.9 years for Blacks versus 77.6 years for Whites. For current, <clears throat> excuse me, while current events in our country, including the high rate of COVID-19 amongst African Americans and the killing of another unarmed Black man by law enforcement has once again brought this longstanding problem to the forefront. We must recognize that the challenges with racism are not new. They are ever present and felt in the lives of most Black people every day. Further, Black people may have been acutely impacted and aware of racism. However, it has a rippling effect throughout our community and country. So this is not an issue for just Black people. It is problematic for America. So we must be united addressing this in Columbus and across America. 
We are now presented with an opportunity to make major changes in America to eradicate racism. In order to begin to make these changes, we have to acknowledge that racism exists. It should not be treated as a taboo word or topic. This is about racial justice. We have to be able to openly discuss racism, to understand how it is operating in our society and develop solutions. There have been measures taken and research done about racial disparities. We must support current efforts and implement recommendations that have been made that alleviate racial inequities. The city has taken steps to address racial issues in many ways. The city of Columbus is engaging directly in a reform agenda for public safety. The city has implemented aggressive strategies to address infant mortality. Columbus Public Health has established the Center for Public Health and Innovation, recognizing that, that not everyone in Columbus has the same opportunities to be healthy. As stated in, this, in the resolution, the members of council have steadfastly supported efforts that focus on improving the quality of life and equity for all Columbus residents. These efforts include the Commission on Black Girls, which I established in July of 2018. A report including recommendations will be released soon. Ongoing support for the small and minority business and the city's work to implement the recommendations of a disparity study that was under the leadership of Mayor Ginther. So he will share something about that. The creation of My Brother's Keeper in 2015, which certainly has been championed by President Shannon Harden, and funding and support for the Columbus Women's Commission, which I know um, Karen Morrison and the mayor have certainly been very active in the Columbus Women's Commission. Fair housing, and also I think Shayla, Commission, Council of Favors is also a part of that. Fair housing support and efforts to curb eviction, which dis disproportionately affects people of color. Or we are doing the work. We know that there is a long road ahead, ahead of us to continue to make progress, which is why this resolution is so necessary. It will take a systemic it will take systemic changes as well as education and awareness concerning racial bias. More importantly, it will take us all working together. And that is why I am so happy to be joined by my colleagues, but also to be joined by the people that are also speaking on this panel today. So I would now like to turn it over to our mayor, Mayor Andrew Ginther. Thank you so much, Council Member Tyson, and uh, grateful to have uh, such a, a great partnership uh, and track record with you, uh, and really appreciate um, all of the work that you have done uh, throughout the years and, and your career in this space. Um, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, so happy that Board of Health Chair Karen Morrison has joined us, Dr. Roberts in Columbus Public Health. Health, uh, Council Member Faber, Council Member Remy, uh, thank you all for joining uh, and letting me join you. It's been a very tough day, a few tough days uh, in our city, a city we all love. I feel the pain and frustration of our neighbors. And I want to renew my commitment to addressing racism that exists in our neighborhoods, in the workplace, and in law enforcement. I want to thank Councilwoman Tyson for her work on this critically important resolution on racism as a public health crisis to be presented to Columbus City Council in just uh, a few hours. In my State of the City address in February, I shared my equity agenda, an agenda that calls out racism and discrimination where it exists and my plans to address it. A lot has changed since that night. But what hasn't changed is the disparity that exists in our community, especially as it relates to health. 
It is important to remember that we are in the midst of a global pandemic and COVID-19 has resulted in a public health crisis that has disproportionately negatively impacted minorities and people in communities of color. The ensuing human service crisis and economic challenges will have a greater negative economic impact on our neighbors of color and those that are lower wage earners. In February, I asked our health commissioner, Dr. Roberts, to explore racism as a public health crisis. And last month, she formed the Center for Public Health Innovation to address this issue. She will be speaking to you in a few moments on the center's work to reduce health inequities and racial disparities. I wanna reiterate my continued commitment to addressing disparities that existed before COVID-19, before the tragic deaths of George Floyd and Ahmed Abre and countless others. And before the events of the past several days in Columbus and across our country, we know that infant mortality, for example, is more prevalent in neighborhoods with higher rates of incarceration, unemployment, and lack of opportunities for affordable housing, healthcare, education, and even fresh fruits and vegetables. We are addressing these issues through our incredible work in public-private partnership of Celebrate One. We know disparities existed in how city contracts were awarded. Our Office of Diversity and Inclusion is working on implementing recommendations from a disparity study we completed last year. And we know that the work continues. We have doubled our minority spend as a city in the last few years, but we have so much more work to do. And we know implicit bias exists in every single one of us, all of us. It's important to acknowledge that even more important to do something about it and get the training that we all need and what I've required of all city employees, including the division of police. All of us have bias. We need to acknowledge it exists and build the tools and muscle memory and strength to deal with them and overcome them mm -hmm. and not let them impact our service to the people of Columbus. Neighbors' equity must be the lens through which we address each stage of the crisis we're facing now. Otherwise, the gaps that already exist will grow. The disparity will deepen and widen. We cannot address equity without also addressing racism. And everyone has a role to play. This is, without a doubt, the most challenging time most of us have ever faced. But together we can tackle the crisis and the disparities in our community together. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, Mayor Gepler, and certainly thank you for your commitment to continuing to move this work forward. It's greatly appreciated. And I know that um, with your leadership and this and um, council colleagues, our partners throughout this community, we will we will be a beacon for other cities. I now want to recognize um, our Col Columbus Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Mashika Roberts. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ginther and Council Member Tyson. Thank you both for your leadership and your commitment to addressing racism, which has a grip on our communities and, and communities all across this nation. I am grateful to Columbus City Council, as well as Columbus Board of Health for stepping up informally calling racism what it is, a public health crisis. For more than 400 years in this country, African Americans have been subjected to disparities that lead to shorter, less healthy lives. Persistent racial disparities in chronic diseases and social determinants of health contribute to poor health outcomes of African Americans. Our current global pandemic has spotlighted these disparities that have existed for far too long in this country. Discriminatory practices that have negatively impacted economic stability, physical environments, education, food, food stability and access, healthcare access, social cohesion of African Americans, which has led to reduced life expectancy, diminished health, 
and limitations that keep minority communities from realizing their full potential. The bottom line is racism and health disparities are a public health crisis and one that has become even more apparent during this unprecedented worldwide pandemic and the civil unrest that we have seen in Columbus in the last few days. We must all be a part of the change that we need to see. And that's why I know we are all here today. Columbus Public Health has opened a new Center for Public Health Innovation with a mission to increase life expectancy and raise the quality of life by reducing health inequities. The new center will develop recommendations for Mayor Ginther to address racism and health disparities in Columbus to protect the health and improve the lives of everyone in our community. And while we continue to work to address racism, we also must strive to increase access to care, improve educational opportunities, encourage job training, and promote safe and affordable housing. When we address these things, we will improve health outcomes of African Americans as well as the entire community. Work by the Center for Public Health Innovation will be critical to addressing racism and helping set policies that will move us forward as a city to a healthier and more equitable community for all residents in our community. So whether it's through the work of Celebrate One, which is ensuring black and brown babies live to their first birthdays, the Violent Crime Review Group, which shows that victims of homicides are disproportionately African-American men, or chronic disease rates that show blacks in Columbus live shorter lives with poor health outcomes. The tragic and untimely death of George Floyd, George Floyd and the protests in Columbus continue to show us that this work is so very urgent and our resolve must be great and steadfast. The commitment we all share in addressing racism is evident in these public declarations today. As health commissioner, I am proud to be a part of this effort and the progress we must make together to ensure that African Americans and all people live the healthy and safe lives they deserve. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. And now we'll hear from the Columbus Board of Health Board President, Karen Morrison. Um, thank you for being here, Mrs. Morrison. The floor is yours, not the floor is yours, but please. Um, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Tyson, and thank you for your leadership on this important issue. Um, I also wanna thank Mayor Ginther for your ongoing and steadfast leadership as well. As board president, I'm proud to join my fellow Columbus Board of Health members, Mayor Ginther, our partners at City Council and at the Columbus Public Health in taking a stand to declare that racism is a public health crisis. As you've heard, it's clear from recent events that we are at a crossroads. COVID-19 and the protests here and abroad have highlighted racism and the negative impact it has on the health, safety, and well-being of people of color. I remain encouraged though, that there's a shared belief that the time is now for public and private partners, community leaders, and all of our residents to stand together to denounce racism and to commit to health equity so that all people have the opportunity to attain their highest level of health. Now, just a short time ago, the Columbus Board of Health passed a resolution declaring racism a public health crisis. This declaration reaffirms our commitment and the work that Columbus Public Health and the board undertake to address racism and to reduce disparities. Columbus Public Health and the board are also committed to using racial equity lens when we implement new policies, programs, and practices at the department. I am so proud to see the city of Columbus leaders, my fellow board members, coming together to address racism as a public health crisis, because we all have a role to play. And I believe that we will hold each other accountable. When we improve the health of minority communities, we improve the health of our entire community. And the Board of Health will continue to work with you to reach this goal. 
Thank you very much. And I'll turn it back to you, Council Member Tyson. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Morrison, and just really appreciate your leadership um, of placing this resolution, um, placing this resolution, um, presenting the resolution to the board and the board accepting this resolution. And so I appreciate your leadership and certainly the leadership of Dr. Roberts. And we're all in this together to make a change occur in our community. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. I will conclude today's press conference the way I began with, well, before I do that, I'm gonna find out if any of my council colleagues have anything they would like to say, I'm sorry. See, Councilman Remy is here and Councilmember Favor. Any comments? Councilmember Remy saying no. Okay. Well, I would now like to conclude today's press conference in a way I began with a quote from another great leader and humanitarian, Nelson Mandela. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People, people must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. We have much work to do in order to eliminate racial inequities. And we must do the work with love. And I'm appreciative of um, Mayor Ginther, our Columbus Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Roberts, and the Columbus Board Chair of the Board of Health, President Karen Morrison. We will all do this work together. And we will now take calls from the media. Um, Nick Evans has a question. Yeah, um, hi. Uh, I'd actually like to direct this to uh, the mayor, if I could. Um, over the weekend, sir, you, you tweeted and then later deleted a a, uh, a tweet in which you, you said that the, the police had been uh, aggressive. Um, you, you, like I said, you later deleted that. So I'd like to know, A, what, why did you delete it? But also, if you can't stand by a statement that's that mildly critical of the police, how are you going to enact uh, meaningful reform? Appreciate the, the, the question, Nick. Uh, the only reason the um, tweet was deleted is there was a reference to proactive uh, investigation of events, of pictures and videos uh, that we had uh, uh, received over the weekend, particularly uh, police engagement uh, with a very overwhelmingly peaceful protest uh, at the State House on Saturday. Uh, morning. Uh, since then, we have put in place and are going to be sharing uh, later today a way for folks to share pictures and, and videos uh, of incidents over the weekend where they felt the uh, response from the police, engagement from police did not meet our community's uh, expectations. I've been very clear uh, and I accept full responsibility. I am the mayor. I accept full responsibility for the engagement and the tactics used by the Division of Police on Saturday. They did not meet mine or the community's expectations. I had a very direct conversation with the chief on uh, Sunday morning, and I think uh, you and many others that have been down there have seen a very, very different approach. Uh, we encourage and support peaceful protests. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, dissent is the greatest form of patriotism. There's a big difference between peaceful protest and criminals uh, who are coming from extremist fringe groups to, um, you know, destroy and try to burn down our city and create violent situations and threaten our officers. Our focus is on protecting peaceful protesters and making sure they're safe and going after uh, a very small minority of folks, most of which who do not live here, uh, that do not share our values uh, and uh, getting those folks out of the street and stop them from hijacking 
uh, a, a great movement to address racism and discrimination. Um, but that is the full story uh, associated with that. Thank you, Mayor. The next um, person who would like to ask a question or give a statement is Luann Stoya. This question is also for the mayor since he's there. Uh, mayor, there is a change.org petition right now that is calling for your resignation and for the resignation of the police chief. Can you please address that? Um, I am the mayor of the 14th largest uh, city in America, uh, and I get criticized every day uh, for things that uh, we do or that we do not do. Uh, and the chief of police uh, is uh, a very uh, whole pro a high profile community leader that's in charge uh, of the division of police and how we best serve the community. Uh, I accept the criticism. I accept, uh, you know, my role and my job as a leader is to be accountable, accept responsibility, admit mistakes when mistakes are made and make changes when necessary. Uh, that is the way I have served throughout my entire career. And uh, I uh, look forward to continuing to calling out discrimination and racism wherever we find it and continuing to address it for meaningful change um, because we know it's a great threat. Racism and discrimination is a great threat to the health and the safety and the well-being of the people of Columbus. Thank you, Mayor. Carrie Gross. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, as, as you said um, earlier today, that this, this is a first step in publicly, the city publicly acknowledging this crisis and making a statement. So my question is particularly with the pandemic uh, really tearing the economy down and there's a chance to rebuild the economy um, what are the action steps to implement and, and move forward the sentiment that's expressed in the resolution here is that a question for me or for also the panels the other and everybody Okay, well, for me, <laughs> I'll start. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, first and foremost, um, for me, this resolution serves as a um, acknowledgement of the crisis. And um, even though um, many of us who are working um, in the public sector and some in the private sector, I think, have a, somewhat of an understanding of um, racism being a public health crisis the actual declaration to be able to state that, uh, as we talked earlier, they'll have more conversations about what racism is. And so one, the acknowledgement, two is then I think we have to have an understanding as the mayor just suggested, I, we do have to have more training on implicit and explicit bias. So how do we get here as I, um, you know, racism is 400 years into the, it, in this country and it certainly isn't going to turn over and change overnight but we certainly can take steps to to be able to eradicate racism so understanding as to how we got here um, um, the city has also as i mentioned in some of my remarks and the mayor and and dr roberts um, have certainly shared the work that they've been doing in our and as a city in each of our respective areas to be able to um, to deal with racial inequities and disparities in our community. And so we, do, we have information, we have the information recommendations from different studies, but what we can do now is to continue to take those recommendations and move them forward. And um, as Ms. Morrison stated, and I think everyone has stated this too, but the public-private partnership is critical to doing that. It's critical to make to making change occur in Columbus. And I absolutely believe that all of us working together, we can certainly be, oops, sorry, we can certainly be um, a beacon for other cities to follow. And Carrie, if I could just chime in, this is Dr. Roberts, and you it mentioned that this was the first step. And I would I would push back a little bit and say actually 
you know, back in February at the mayor's state of the city, he um, stated that racism was a public health crisis and charged me and my team with coming up with recommendations for him to help address racism as a public health crisis. As a result of that, in April, we created the Center um, for Public Health Innovation, where we are working on developing our recommendations to share with the mayor. I would also share with you that even before his February State of the City, that the staff here at CPH have all been trained on implicit bias. Um, and so we um, have done that training and refreshed ourselves on that training on a regular basis. So this has been work that has been in progress for some time. Um, I think this declaration now is important given everything that we've experienced over the last three months and especially what we've experienced over the last week. We have um, Tanisha Johnson. Hi, um, question is for Mayor Ginther and Dr. Roberts. Uh, so we've recognized that police here have had bulletproof vests on, but many with no PPE. Um, protesters, uh, many, some have had PPE, some have not. Um, and we know that social distancing obviously has been an issue. So how has this disparity um, either been exacerbated or is, how is it being considered in this way um, as many minorities are now being put further at risk during these protests? Um, and then what is the message uh, to protesters, especially when it comes to the pandemic while they are protesting and then possibly leaving, having been either pepper sprayed, uh, tear gassed, those kinds of things? Well, uh, uh, Tanisha, thanks for the question. I'll take a crack at it, and then I'll let the public health expert speak to more uh, of, of the elements that she's far more qualified uh, to, to speak to. I'll tell you what I've tried to do is that when I've been out and be part of protests as I was uh, this afternoon, and when I've been visiting uh, the sites of damaged businesses, I've tried to, uh, you know, model as uh, good a behavior, uh, follow all the recommendations that Dr. Roberts has been giving us in the community, you know, wearing a mask, doing my very best, uh, uh, which is challenging when you're involved in a peaceful protest to, to keep six feet away. Uh, but doing uh, my very best. But I also know that this is a time where uh, people uh, want to be able to ask the, the mayor direct questions and engage with the mayor uh, in, in a direct way uh, and uh, be reassured that we are listening to the people of Columbus and that we've heard them out. And as I spoke to some of the other questions by the press, uh, we have done that and uh, I think the results uh, you know, uh, are there and, and, and felt by the community. I would tell you that uh, Dr. Roberts can uh, speak a little bit more to the challenges of slowing the spread when we have seen um, the types of protests that have taken place, some folks wearing masks and some not. But uh, what I've attempted to do is lead by example, albeit very imperfectly. Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Mayor Denton, and thank you for the question, Tanisha. Um, I would say that, yes, when I saw the crowds not only here but even across the country, I was really concerned about the um, lack of face coverings. I mean, the social distancing that wasn't practiced is to be expected when you bring large groups together to protest. And I do understand why people feel the need to protest at this time. Um, but it is an unfortunate time that we're also dealing with a worldwide pandemic. Um, I would encourage everyone who chooses to protest to make sure they wear a face covering and wear it consistently. I saw many people wearing them but taking them off to talk. Um, and then every time people talk or yell or um, chant, they're um, brewing respiratory droplets that could be spread to others. You know, the good news is they are outside versus being inside, um, but it is a concern and it is something that my team will be monitoring over the next few days and weeks to see if we get um, any additional cases, and particularly those who might have been linked to or might have attended one of the protests over the last several days. I would say in terms of the racial disparity, though, what I was proud to see among the protesters was a very diverse crowd. So I saw protesters of all different hues out there. Um, we can share the data that we have here, and there definitely is a disparity in our cases here in Columbus. What we're seeing more than anything is more African Americans, really more minorities, needing hospitalization if they get COVID-19. 
which goes back to more African Americans are likely to have chronic conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and lung disease that put them at increased risk for complications due to COVID-19. So it's something that my team will be monitoring over the next few weeks to see what our case count looks like and to see if there's any connection to the protest. But I again would encourage individuals who are going out to protest to make sure they wear face coverings and when possible um, to have that six feet of spacing. And if you fall in one of those high risk groups, like you're over the age of 65 or have a chronic health condition, I would encourage you to find a different way to have your voice be heard during this time so that you're not at increased risk for being out there with the rest of the protesters. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. And um, if there aren't any more questions regarding the, the resolution, I would now like to, uh, again, thank um, Mayor Ginther, I, um, our Health Commissioner, Dr. Roberts, and our Columbus Board of Health President, uh, Karen Morrison, for coming and also for, for passing or for sharing their information, being partners with us, and um, for the Columbus Board of Health to certainly pass in the resolution today. And we're so, we're very supportive of that. And so again, thank you. If you have, uh, if the press has any individual questions um, for us, you can please contact us through um, uh, our communications director, um, Lee Cole. So with that, thank you very much and uh, just appreciate us all working together to eradicate racism. Thank you.